Last night, like you just got done pulling. I hate you. I'm trying to get you to get down on water, please. Man, don't you play with like that, bro. You know how we start, we get nervous. We see that thing. Oh man, it's fun. Hey man, is it on? Rattling. We need some new mics, man. Oh, it's rattling. What you need? No, you need some. You need a microphone, man. So you be talking. You be talking to him now. You need a microphone, bro. Why is, it, why is it all crackly, man? It ain't. It is, bro. It's crackly. It's crackly, bro. Man, it's crackly, bro. Man, we need the band. <laughs> I was about to say something crazy. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to do it, though, man. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Look at you, man. You better know when they start dancing. Look at him. <laughs> Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Hey, man, you need to turn this microphone up, man. Good evening, good evening. You loud enough? No, I'm not, man. I can't hear myself, bro. I can't hear myself, man. There you go, there you go, there you go. There you go, there you go, there you go. There you go, there you go, there you go. I say, man, turn it up. Turn it up, man. He's going to start laughing a minute. Turn it up what? No, man, I ain't going to stop. Man, I laughed so much last week, bro. Make sure you give him the Woo! Make sure, you Make sure I give him the, the new number. The new what happened to the old number? Did the old number? <laughs> the old number started off. The old number started cracking. Yeah, defecting. Man, see that's what happened. Well, we step up the game. Well, we step up the game. That technology, boy, we'll switch up on them in a minute. Mm. The new number. Hey, making you put it in the in the uh, in the chat? It's in there already. Nah, man, you supposed to put it in there, pin it. Look at it. It's on there already. Put it in there, pin it, man. I told you it's on there already. What I say, Mike? Look here, look here. Hey, Mike. Anime I here. told you, Mike. Anime eat the cake. <laughs> DJ. <laughs> DJ. <laughs> you gonna get anime, it, DJ. Anime eat the cake, anime eat the cake, anime. You, DJ. <laughs> you, this for me. <laughs> this this <laughs> nigga is for me. <laughs> Nigga, you you not gonna throw my tape away, sticky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do <laughs> you not gonna throw my tape away. You know what? You not gonna throw my tape away. You know what? Sticky, you sticky. I didn't mean it, baby. <laughs> you don't know about my you don't know about that. Hey man, listen. Okay, all right. <laughs> The new number to the, it ain't a new show. We on episode 91. Why we get a new number now? What about our own guests? They ain't going to know what number to call. Hold it into 100. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to get it. I know how to get it. <laughs> See, I know how to get it. <laughs> You'll be like that dude on the video, right? <laughs> you see the moment the dude bust out crying. He say, man, you, you treated us so bad. Hey man, but uh, the new number to the show, 712 770 4984. Man, you better have one. It's 712 770 770 4984. Yeah, and the code. And they got to do a code? They got, if they want to get in, they do. And the code. Man, some, hey, hey, can y'all call in here and practice? Because I don't even know if this works, man. Don't nobody call a number that. 813435. Oh, good grief, man. We ain't gonna never, I ain't gonna never get nobody to call into the show now, man. 8130. Listen. <laughs> look at that, look at that, look at that. Look at that, he ain't gonna stay with that long. He ain't gonna stay with that long. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, stop playing. Stop playing, stop playing. <laughs> stop playing, stop playing. All right, let's do it, let's do it. All right, I'm ready now. 712-770-4984. 712-770-4984. And then you got to put in a pin. The pin... Is 813 435. 813 435. So you got to do 712. Somebody call up here, man, and see if this thing. I don't even know if this works. If it don't, if it don't. Man, I don't know, man. It's just, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I'm just doing, hey, man, I'm trying to do my best, bro. That's it. Uh, one thing I do know, this is, uh, hey, man, the phone ringing, bro. One thing I do know is the, um, 
This is episode 91. Thank you for calling the Daily Bread Radio Show. Yeah, what's already in there? Ain't what's already in there? Six, yeah, six three, one, every call. Six, oh, three, one, every call. Oh! Show is we each and every week I try to bring up 
different topics, and just it. I, the show's motto was this: educate, motivate, and elevate. That's it. Edu my job and my objective is to educate you on a certain topic. Hopefully, it will motivate you to take some action, and then when you take that action, you're going to be elevated. Yep. You will be elevated. I, I guarantee you. The information that I give you, if you take it and use it, right? It's kind of like a saw or a pistol or any kind of, you know, tool. You know, a hammer don't work if you don't swing it. Come on now. A hammer? See, I, I mean, man, that's I good. love this show. That's good. That's good. I know that's good, but See, a hammer I, don't work if you don't swing it. Say hello to Ashley. Hey, Ashley, how you doing? That's my, man, that's my daughter, man. That's my number King. one seed, man. Say hello to King Jr. Oh man, that's my hey boy, that's my dude, man. That's my ooh, ooh. that's my dude, boy. King Jr., boy. That's a that's a heck of a that's a that's a mouthful right there, boy. When you a king, when you a king, and then you have a son, he ain't the prince. He King Jr. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My son ain't no prince. He King Jr. Right? Joseph Cotton. Oh man, Joe Cotton, man. That's my uh man, <sighs> bro. That's my brother. That's my brother from another another mother, man. That's my my dude, man. My roommate from college, my right hand man from day one. We go all the way back to Eric Dickinson. Mm -mm. Eric Dickinson, E D. That's who that is, man. That's that's who that. And it's just so man, that's so powerful that man. What's this? Twenty eighteen? Man, you talking twenty three years later, man? My roommate said, "Well, let me tune in, man, just to show this dude some support." Who? It's twenty nineteen. Is it twenty nineteen already? Yeah. February. Oh my gosh, man. Wrong with you, man. Wait a minute, man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Joe. Happy birthday, bruh. Oh, forget you. Man, it's Mega Mud. Man, I'm going to call you as soon as I get off the air. Man, I, man, how you let me forget, bruh? Because we are all of us a week apart. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to Joe Cotton, my roommate. February the 20th, man. I was just, I was twisted yesterday, bruh. Just running, trying to do some stuff, man, and it just slipped away. But hey, man, just know that I love you. I appreciate you, bruh. And I definitely, man, we'll link up as soon as I get off the air, man. Yeah, it's Mega Month. I mean, you said it's 2019. Oh, man. But, um, yeah, me and two, two of my real close friends, man, we all born a week apart. You know what I'm saying? We found that out when we was in college. That's mm. just a sidebar. sidebar. When your birthday? The 6th. Bro, my birthday the 13th. When your birthday? The 20th. Oh, my God. So all the way through college, man, and, and since then, man, every week we nicknamed February is, is Mega Month. Mega That's month. what we call it, Mega Month. Because when we was in college, man, we the whole month, boy, we got down, boy. We got down. I ain't going to go into detail. Don't say it. I'm not going to go into detail. But uh, just know we got down in Mega Month. So happy birthday, Joe. Appreciate you, bro. And, um, but yeah, man, we got a, we got an outstanding show. I think what I need to do, because I, I mean, I might get too hyped. So I'm going to do like we do, like we do in church, right? I'm going to start off with the announcements. So pass the collection plate. Nah, we ain't passing no collection plate. Okay. I mean, if people want to donate, just hey, you gotta do but say the word, man, and we'll we'll come up with it and put it in our, you know, cash app or you know, whatever we need to do to get it going, man. But um one of the things that we wanna do is to make sure that, you know, we make let me get these announcements in there so that way I won't forget. Because we got some powerful stuff that's coming up and, and it's uh it's really just God blessing us, man. That's the only, that's the only way I know how to describe it, man. It's really just, you know, the creator looking up, you know, really looking out for us. So um, the first thing that I'm going to announce is, uh, let's see, next week? No, it's not going to be next week. I'm sorry. I'm trying to pull it up on my computer. Uh, you know what? Computer, that's why y'all got to have your backup plan. So check this out. March the 7th. 12 p.m. to 1 p.m., Morehouse College, Mays Hall Lounge, the 2019 Spring Talent Assessment and Development Academy that's sponsored by the Career Development and Engagement Department. I'm going to be the guest speaker. Come on now. Come on. I'm going to be the guest speaker at Morehouse College. And guess what the topic is going to be? What's the topic? <laughs> The topic is going to be, let me show you how to do what? Get educated, motivated, and elevated. Yeah, I, I submitted a proposal, and Morehouse College approved. They, they approved for me to come in and teach their students about the basics of personal finance. So we're going to have a session at Morehouse College where we're going to start 
This is going to be the first of many seminars that I'll be doing across the nation at HBCUs and other colleges. I'm starting with the HBCUs because I want to start with us first because we deserve to be first. We deserve to be first. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing. So it's going to be a historic event, March 7th, Morehouse College. I'm going to be talking to these young brothers and if there's some you know, young ladies that join from Spelman and the other attendees, we're going to be talking about the basics of personal finance and what the real world has in store for these young men as they cross that threshold that we all call graduation. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people that's graduating from college, they're thinking, I'm going to get my degree, I'm going to get me a whip, I'm going to get my own place. But little do they know, mm. little do they know, Come on. based on the I'm not saying, I'm not saying it, but I'm saying what the research and the data said, it's going to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and enlighten them brothers, share some information with them, and give them the opportunity to stay linked up with the Daily Bread Radio Show and myself. So that way, as they cross that threshold called graduation in May, and they get into these different situations like buying a car, and, don't, and, and they've never, I ain't talking about no hoopty, I'm talking about when you go to the dealership. When they get into that situation, get a real car. Get a real car. When they get ready to get a, a real place, they'll have a resource they can reach out to, and it'll protect them. Because what I'm actually doing is putting together a network of individuals in different capacities, real estate, car dealerships, insurance. So that way when these individuals need to have insurance, real estate, they won't walk in and not know what's going on and get and let somebody take advantage of them. Mm -hmm. Man, that thing though, you ain't put the thing, bro. It look backwards, bro. The thing backwards, man. It's backwards, man. I'm looking at the TV. Wait, man. wait, keep talking. You got it. But um, so I'm gonna I, I was I was blessed. To be able to have that done. So that's March the 7th at 12 to 1, Mays Hall, on the campus of Morehouse College. We're going to be putting it down over there. And I'm super excited about that. Now, next week, the 28th, on our show, we're going to have the dean of the career development and engagement department from Morehouse. She's going to be our guest next week on the show. And she's going to be talking about, you know, what makes up the Talent Assessment and Development Academy. Like, what is the Talent Assessment and Development Academy? Like, what 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 does that entail? I'm also going to pose the question to her, like, what made them feel like the timing was right to bring in someone like myself to talk to these young men about personal finance, right? So we're going to have a great conversation with her. That's Dr. Priscilla Hubbard. She'll be on next week. And uh, so make sure you all catch that show as well. And uh, anybody, how, how would it be next? Uh, I, I get that question a lot. Like, why, why didn't you start at Howard? But the reason I didn't start this program at Howard, going through this process, the reason I didn't start with Howard was this. How would you feel if somebody was right in your midst and instead of me reaching out to you, I bypassed you and went somewhere else, all the way to Washington, D.C.? Mm. Would that make sense? That wouldn't make no sense. I got brothers and sisters right here in Atlanta. I live in Atlanta. So the thing that I said was like, you start here and you grow out. So Howard is definitely on the list because that's, you know, that's home. I'm alumni. So Dr. Fred, you get ready. If y'all know Dr. Fred, you can give him a hands up say, man, get ready. This brother coming. And we're not taking no for an answer. Okay, so just put it out there. We're not taking no for an answer. These brothers and sisters need to be educated on credit, budget, money. And I'm going to put y'all up on something, right? Before I give y'all this next, nah, I'm going to say, I'm not going to jump ahead. That's that's for the show. So that's the first announcement. I'll be at Morehouse College, March the 7th, 12 to 1, Mays Hall, and we're going to be doing it real big. We filming it, we shooting it, got the photographer coming, got the video team coming. We doing it. We are. It's going to be, bro, this is going to be monumental. Mm. Now, I know I said Smithful. It's going to be monumental, bigger than monumental. But um, so we're doing that. The second thing, and again, this is just blessings. And uh, shout out to my lovely wife. I see Tanya on. Love you to death, girl. Man, you talking about ride or die. Come on, man. 28 years. And some. That's just married 28 years. We ain't even talking about it. Anyway, love you, girl. Love you, love you, love you. Love everything about you. From the head to the bottom of your feet. How about that? 
But um, the next the next announcement is um, March the 9th, Saturday night, in Atlanta. I'm going to be the host of the Real Women Atlanta magazine showcase. And that is going to be the Still We Rise event. It's going to happen at the Savannah College of Arts and Design. And I'm going to be the host. Of the event, I'm gonna be the Steve Harvey of the host. I'm gonna be the mm -hmm. I'm gonna be the show I'm the show host. Mm -hmm. Me and Amanda Cooper. Amanda Cooper is on WALK. -OK. She's one of the on-air personalities at WALK, -OK, and she's gonna be rocking with you. I'm gonna be up there, so I got to get the tuxedo. I got come to on. get the James come Bond. On, come on, come you know what I'm saying? So I'll be you know I'll be drinking water for the next two weeks, but I'll be getting got there stealthy. But yeah, man, I'm gonna be the host. Yeah, I'm going to be the host of that event. And, and really, this event is big because it's celebrating black 400 years of black women achievement. 400 years from 1619 to 2019. 400 years. And we're going to be, you know, celebrating some outstanding young ladies in the community uh, from a civic standpoint, from a business standpoint, from a legal standpoint, so more to come on that, but that's March the 9th, uh, starts at 7, the red carpet starts at 6, the event starts at 7, so I'll make sure that I get you all some additional information on that. If you want to pick up tickets, you can go to tickets.scad, S-C-A-D, scadshow.com forward slash Real Women Atlanta. Go out there and get a ticket, so that way you can come out some of the honorees, the honorees include Mayor Evelyn Wynn Dixon, Mercedes Miller, and she's the executive director of the Georgia International Conference Center. We got Senator Nakima Williams mm. and attorney Meredith Little. So make sure that y'all come out. Additional honorees are going to include Design Dixon, Diallo, Erica Wells, Laditra White, Valerie Morgan, Shaverne Jeter. Chandra Knight and Maria Boynton. Come on. Now, that is going to be an exceptional evening. Black tie, red carpet, and black excellence celebrating 400 years of black women achievement. The next thing that we want to uh, announce is next Saturday, March the 2nd, we're going to be having a the 2K Power Walk. And this is a celebration of 400 years of black women achievement. It's going to be next Saturday at the Atlanta Beltline. For more information, go to 1619-atlpowerwalk.eventbrite.com. Mm -hmm. I'll say that again. 1619-atlpowerwalk.eventbrite.com. So those are, the, those are the three things that are going on. But I got one even bigger than that. I got one bigger than that, and I'm going to drop it. I'm going to make the announcement right here, right now. Check this out. I'm going to just show you all this that we've been talking about through the past 90 episodes, the stuff that I share with you all each and every week. I don't share it because I'm, I'm a big... Hold on, let me finish. Wait a minute. What? Man, how you gonna, oh, man. How you, you going to do that, man? Bro, you just handed it to me. Okay. Hey, man, I'm a professional, bro. There you go. Come on, man. You should have this on a cue card or a teleprompter or something, man. All right, next we got DKM Radio presents Love and Laughter. Ow! Oh, love and Laughter. Fit for the entire family. Come and see us at New Jerusalem Baptist Church, 422 East Kroger Street, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Saturday. Next Saturday. This Saturday. The day after tomorrow. Yes. Day after tomorrow, February 23rd, 2019, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Clean comedy. Hey, the headliner, Big Daddy Love a Lot. Big Daddy Love a Lot is the headliner. On the undercard, we got light skinned Bobby Brown. And we also got none other than 6'5. So if you want to come out and have some clean, fun, Get your laugh on. You ain't got to worry about no cursing. You ain't got to worry about no innuendos. Come and hang out with us at where New Jerusalem Baptist Church this Saturday, day after tomorrow. Come out, come and hang out with us from 6 to 9 p.m. Get your laugh on, meet some good people, man, and support a great cause. So to get your tickets, go to dkmradio.com. Tickets are only $10. Two tickets, $20. That ain't nothing. 
That's just, that's just a dub. They say that they just a dub, man. So make sure you come out and support this worthy cause, and we look forward to seeing you. Tell them go to the calendar page and the tickets are right there. Man, that's too many. Man, too, that's like the. All right, do, do what now? Go to the calendar. Go down page. the street. Do what? Go All right, to the calendar page. Turn on the left. Do at, what? At the calendar page. Go to the calendar page. And there you go. And there, and there you go. You did. Anything else? You did. I know, man. That's what you I did. do, man. I'm a professional, man. Mm -hmm. Check this out. Here go, here go the biggest one. Uh oh. I'm, a, I'm just going to put it out there now, man, because um, I mean, bro, I say this every week, but I, I sincerely mean this. If it weren't for these people. Someone into me, mm -hmm. and you someone into me, over the last ninety episodes, man. None of this stuff will be possible. But that's why I'm so passionate about when I come on and talk about different topics. Because I'm like, I'm, I'm living it, man. I'm like, I'm truly living it. I'm working with a production team right now. Um, signed all of the paperwork. We're putting everything in place. And what we're going to do is, um, we're going to do a six show pilot. Where we're gonna tape, it's not gonna be the Daily Bread Radio Show. We we haven't released the name of the show yet, but it's gonna be hosted by me. But it's gonna be a show about personal finance from a variety of different angles, of, of different optics. I mean, we gonna I'm gonna just give you a quick glimpse. Within those six episodes, we're gonna talk about things like money in the church. Mm -hmm. That's a real sensitive topic. People talking about tithing. I talked to ministers, they saying that that tithing and giving is at an all-time low. So it's gonna be a little sensitive. It's going and it's meant to be that way because I want it to be thought-provoking. I want I want this to be something that when we put it out into the universe, man, it just goes everywhere. And it's gonna make a lot of sense. We're gonna talk about things like, oh man, I'm not gonna give y'all that one yet. But then we go, because <laughs> that one might be a little too deep. But I'll let you know about that additional show that we're going to do. Of course, we're going to do an intro show to talk about what we're doing and how we're doing it. And um, and then we got a, a big show that's coming out of the, the guy that's going to be the, the primary focal point of this particular show. It's going to be surrounding Amendment 4, which Amendment 4 is a legislation out of Florida that provided convicted felons to have their voting rights restored, but we want to have one of the one of the people that was the genesis of getting that legislation, you know, moving in the right direction. Got another call. Leslie. Call. This is Mega Miss. I'm sorry. Leslie. Leslie, how you doing? This is why I can't talk to the Daily Bread Radio Show. What's your name and where you calling from? Mega Mill calling from Oklahoma City. Mega Mill. Mega Mill? Okay. Mega Man, what's on your what's on your mind? You got a question? You got a concern for the Daily Bread Radio Show? Man, I'm trying to figure out where are all the good men? Can someone help me with that? Uh, how? Uh, how? Look at I'm like, uh, well, it, 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 I mean, that's what I said in the beginning, right? I said everything is tied to personal finance. So, Mega Man, I don't know if you got the right show or the wrong show, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it to you this way. I'm going to give you my perspective on that, right? You said so. Just so I'm, I'm going to repeat the question so that way maybe, so that way I, I'm clear that I understand your question, okay? And your question was simply, where are all the good men, right? Was that your question? Yes. Okay. That was the question. Okay. So, let me, let me give you the disclaimer. Right? I'm going to give you two disclaimers. This is my personal opinion, number one. This is my personal opinion. That's number one. And then number two, I mean, everybody got a different perspective on this, but this is, this is my belief, number two. Personal opinion, number one. My belief, number two. The man you're looking for, right? And you you said your name was, what was it? Was it Mega Meal? Mega Meal. Mega Meal. Okay. So let's start off there, right? So is your name Monique, Michelle, Monica? What I mean, what's your name? My name is Megan Miller. Megan, Megan Miller. Miller. Megan Miller. Megan Miller, yeah. Oh, okay. Megan Miller. Got it. But he said it so quick, so I so said Megan. Let me Miller. get this straight. Why are we getting rid of y'all going with the code? So obviously you had another topic going and the 
person that gave me this code did not tell me what your topic of the night is. So what exactly is your topic of the night? Well, my topic of the night is our show is about personal finance. Talking about the spiritual talk with Minister Neil. Yeah, she was talking about spiritual talk with Minister Neil. But we, now we got you. We got Megan. Megan need this too. So our topics tonight is talk, so, talking about. Where is all the good men with good finances? Oh my goodness! See, Put that in there too. Okay. <laughs> so let me let me let me say it like this. So when you say where the, where the good men at, I believe that all of the good men start with the good woman. And what I mean by that is this, you, you don't have to settle for the things that, you know, come across your radar. So what you have to do is, and we, we had a young lady on the show a few weeks ago, and we was talking about branding, right? And I believe that young ladies, are, you have a brand as well, and your brand you attract certain things to your brand. It's just like Starbucks or McDonald's or Burger King, Chick-fil-A. You got a certain, Megan has a certain brand. So if your brand, if your brand is only attracting a certain type of guy, then you got to change your brand. You got to change your brand. That's, but, so let me tell you about this. So I'm going to take it a step further. Now, <clears throat> I may be sure of my age, but... Snoop, on Snoop's first album, Snoop's first album was called Doggy Style. It came out in 1994. And the reason I know it came out in 1994 because that was the year my youngest daughter was born, right? But he has, he has a lyric, and it was an intro that was on one of his songs, and it said, look, don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. She chose. She chose me. So I'm saying that to you to mean that you choose. All women have the right to choose. So when you say where are all the good men at, you got to choose the good men. So going back to number one, you got to change your brand so that way if you want to attract, what type what type of man do you want to attract? When you say the good man. You know, I, <laughs> and to me, a, a good man is a man that's having a steady career that if he has children, he is current with his child support. Okay. He doesn't have drama going back and forth with his baby's mom. Okay. He has his own source of income, can take care of himself without me. Okay. And what I bring to the table just makes what he has to do easier. Okay. So let me ask you a question. So you, you just gave the criteria, right? All the things you just named, that was the criteria that you, what you're looking for, right? Right. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Have you been involved with a man that didn't meet them, those criteria that you just gave me? Okay. Have, okay. There you go. There you go. So, but if you, it, see, the thing about this is it, it's, it's simple, right? Everybody has the power of choice. So, if you just gave me all the criteria, he got to be, you know, Take care. He got to be able to stand on his own too. That's what I call. He got to be able to stand on his own too. If he do have kids, he got to be, you know, current on his child support. He got to be, hey, I, I don't need that drama from baby mama. Guess what? You are the person that he put the application in with. You the person doing the hiring. So if you hire and you say, hey, I need you to be able to type 80 words a minute, and he come in there and just say, well, hey, I can't type 80 words a minute, but I can make you laugh. He can't get type, typing 85 words a minute, taking care of, having a job. So he can't get correct, or he wouldn't. No, 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 no. Let me back up, Megan. I ain't going to take the whole show and tell you this. I educate you on this, but let me tell you this. He came in. Let me tell you how he came in. He came in the same way he went out. Okay? Because one, one thing about people, right, we see... We see what we want to see in people when we want to see it. So all that stuff, like when you say he came in with it, no, nah, he didn't come in with it. Because if he came in with it, like if he came in with a job and lost his job, guess what he would do? He'd get another one. If he came in, not take, if he came in with his child support current, and then it, it ended up not being current, he'll get it current. So he came in with the same package, the same everything that he went out with. 
But with, again, you the employer. So if you accept him not meeting the criteria, then at that point you can't say, well, hey, we're all, all the good men are inside of you. No, 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 Hey, now you know. This is, this is where it's at. Hey, tell everybody. Tell everybody. But go ahead. Go ahead. We're going we gonna to have you wrap up that, that last thought, and then we're going to, uh, I'm going to jump on it. I got a couple topics I need to give out tonight. But I appreciate you, you know, joining us. Like, you got to join every week now, so don't make it a one-time thing. I got to bring it every week? No, you just got to join. You can call it every week. I mean, we don't, you know, we don't discriminate. But, nah, that's what I said. The same thing. Nah, it'd be the same code next week. But the show, I think the show that you was looking for was my brother, which is Minister Neil on Spiritual Talk. And his show is from 6.30 to 8 every Thursday from 6.30 to 8. He comes on right before me and then I come on from 8 to 9. 8 to 9. Okay. I got you. All right. I got you. All right. Well, we appreciate your call. We appreciate your call. call I'm sorry? What are your call letters? How can I find you if I would want to listen to you? Oh, you could go to um, the Daily Bread Radio Show dot com. You could go to Daily Bread Radio Show on Facebook Live. And you can go to Daily Bread Radio Show on YouTube Live. And you can go to DKMRadio.com. So all of those are sources where you can hear the show. And you can catch us every week right here, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., talking about personal finance. Personal finance. Personal finance. They don't make money. It don't make sense. Yeah, I'm getting mine up there, too. Okay. Well, stay tuned, and we appreciate the call. Yep. Okay. All right, so, what I mean, <clears throat> so that's a good segue into what we were talking about tonight. So the, the three topics that we wanted to talk about, um, we still got good time was the first one it, it has to do with and I touched on this last week but I had to bring it back up this week because it was still on my mind again it, it's, it's taking action right because somebody I was talking to um, a colleague this week and she was asking me about what makes my show different or what what things do I, I hope to achieve on my show and I told her I was like I really hope that the people that hear my show don't just look at it or listen to it from an entertainment standpoint, from entertainment purposes. I really hope that people listen to the show, take the information, because I try to give it out in like small nuggets that you can take and then put it into play. So when I say that, I really need everybody to just make sure that you, as you listen to the show and you hear different things, you, you got to take action. It has to be, because if you don't take action, you can't make a dream into reality without taking action. Mm -hmm. If you, I, we, I just joked about, if you have the tool, I can give you the hammer, but if you don't swing the hammer, it's nothing going to happen. I mean, it's, it's literally nothing going to happen. And you have every opportunity to change anything that you want to change. But you have to have the desire to change and you have to be willing to take action because action is what really makes things happen. And, and I need you all to be thinking from a legacy standpoint. And I'll give you an example. Um, me and my grandson were talking recently about personal finance. We got this game we like to play. It's called Cash Flow. And we were talking about, you know, spending money, buying things, what have you. But I started introducing him into stock. Like, what is... What does it mean to have stock? What does it mean to own stock? So what he did at that point was he started being, like a kid, he started being inquisitive. Like, when, my, when, when his mother, my daughter would take him somewhere, like say she'd take him to McDonald's, 
he would order his whatever he ordered, cheeseburger, whatever. But then he would also say, he said, Mom, does McDonald's have stock? Mm. Does McDonald's have stock? And she's like, yeah, boy, go on, get, you know, yeah, go on, get you, what you gonna get, whatever, whatever. So when he got to me, I was telling her, and I talked about this on the show two weeks ago, how everybody can go to fidelity.com, fidelity.com, and open up a brokerage account. It's zero minimum, meaning you can take $5 and open up a brokerage account. I talked about that two weeks ago when we were down at the Super Bowl. So I'm going to reiterate it, fidelity.com. You can go to Fidelity. It takes you like five minutes to open an account, name, address, email, and you fund it. You link it to your bank account. You put $5 in there. You got an account, right? The beauty of that, just taking action, because all this has to do with taking action. The reason I like fidelity.com versus, you know, you got Acorn, you got Robinhood, you got other places that you can invest. So I get it. You got Stash, all of these, you know, apps that will help you to get into investing. But the reason I like Fidelity is this. When you open a Fidelity account, you have access to financial analysts, meaning people who look at the stock markets every day, like they are stock analysts. You have access to financial planners. You have people that look at other aspects of finance that because you have an account with Fidelity, regardless of the amount, you can have $5, you're going to be getting the same level of service as somebody that has $500,000. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like Fidelity.com. So what I did was my wife and I, we opened up an account for my grandson and my granddaughter. Now, my grandson is eight. So then we start talking about what type of, you know, what type of stock do you want to buy? So we, me and him was having this conversation. He's going back and forth. He said, well, now this is from an eight-year-old. And I want you all to just marinate on this. This is eight years old, an eight-year-old mind. This is what he's thinking. This is how he's thinking. He said, well, uh, Papa, he said, can we get, he said, can we get something uh, for the PlayStation? Can we get PlayStation stock? I said, not PlayStation but we can get Sony stock. And I said, well, why do you want to get Sony stock? That it, bro, he got a Bible right here. Mm -hmm. He got a Bible right here, okay? I'm gonna tell you the gospel. This eight year old told me, I said, well, why do you want to get, I said, well, why do you want to get Sony stock? He said, because I got a PlayStation 4 and I'm thinking they gonna come out with a PlayStation 5 pretty soon and everybody's going to want one. So if I got the stock, then I should be getting some of that. Now, this is an eight-year-old that's thinking like that now. Just to give you a little background, I had already, we had already been having some conversation about buying Target stock, buying Disney stock, and why. You know, we looked at some other companies. Like, he wanted to buy some stock for Fortnite, but we found out that the company that created the game Fortnite, they don't have stock, but there are other companies that you can buy stock in that's going to benefit from the Fortnite craze, like companies that supply, you know, the different processing chips and graphic chips. It's companies that are benefiting from Fortnite, even though they didn't create Fortnite, but all of the things that go into Fortnite, like the video the movements and all of that kind of stuff. There's other companies that create that that you can buy stock in. So I'm saying that to say this. So we went out, we opened him an account. He got he has two shares of Sony stock. So two shares, somebody might so somebody said two shares, two shares, smooth shares. But here's the thing you gotta think about. He's eight years old and he has two shares of Sony stock. Where is Sony gonna be? when he gets to be 20 a.m. Yeah. And he don't have to do nothing with the shares. He, they're just sitting there. They're just sitting there at eight years old. That's number one. Here go the second benefit. How do you think that's going to change his mind when he gets to be 18 years old and the money's increased and now he's all gone his way to go to college and he knows he's, he brought his first share of stock when he was eight years old. So you know something's going to happen between eight and 18 you know we ain't finished. You know I ain't, gonna, I ain't just going to drop them off there. So 
That's what I mean by taking action. That's, that's what I mean by taking action. We, we have to take action and be thinking 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40. Some of this stuff we ain't going to benefit from. We'll be gone. Let's just be transparent. We'll be gone, right? We would have our time here. The creator would have called us home. But guess what? You still got your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids. Think about that seed that you sow today. It's just like a tree. There's trees in your yard that was little trees. Even weed. A weed would grow into a tree if you don't cut it. A weed. I've had weeds in my yard that I didn't cut. It grew into a little tree. So I'm saying that to say, let's start taking action. And if you don't have an account, you should open up an account for yourself. And then guess what? You grab a couple shares of this or that. I recommend you start off with something like an index fund, like an S&P or the Dow Jones. So that way you got a multitude of different companies and you're not playing like one number like Sony. So he's eight years old. So yeah, he got Sony stock. I didn't get him an index stock, but that'll come too. I'll get him some shares in an index in a mutual fund. But he has a brokerage account at eight. Now, I'm going to hit y'all with something else, and I want you to marinate on it. Now, I told my eight-year-old grandson that my wife and I also brought our four-year-old granddaughter a brokerage account. And his question to me was, he said, why would she need a brokerage? He said, no, not brokerage. Because he didn't know that was the name of it. He said, why would she need a stock account at four years old? She don't know nothing about that. That's, that's what he's telling me. She don't know nothing about that. And I said, you're right. She don't know nothing about that. But that don't mean she shouldn't have one. I'm going to let y'all marinate on that. So we, we got to start taking action. The second topic I want to talk about tonight has to do with this. I want you all to fill in the blank. You fill, you take the time out, and I want you to fill in the blank. Think, think like, and you fill in the blank. Think like a, you fill in the blank. Whatever you think that is. Think like a, right? Act, act, act like a, be like a. So I'll fill in the blank. For me, I'll use my, my own example. Think, think like a media mogul. Think like a media mogul. Act like a media mogul. Be a media mogul. Just them three steps. Just that simple. Simple. It could be something as simple as, you know, being organized, right? Think like an organized person, act like an organized person, be a organized person. Think, act, be. And that's what we do. Whatever you, whatever you keep in your mind's eye, day in and day out, good or bad, good or bad, that's what manifests in your life. Think, act. If you act like you don't have no money, guess what? That's what you're going to be like. But if you act like, man, I don't have everything I need, but I got something that I can work with. I don't have everything, but God, I, I, I appreciate with what God has already given me. I appreciate that. Then that's when you think like me. Think like you're grateful. Think like a grateful person. Think like a grateful person. Act Act like you're grateful. Act like you're grateful. Even if you're pretending, act like you're grateful. And then be like you are grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. So, I mean, I try to make it where it's simple enough and digestible enough so that way people can't come back and say, man, I couldn't, I forgot how you did it. No, one, two, three. One, two, three. Think, act, be. That's it. That's the lesson. Three, three things. Think, act, be. Now, the last topic that I'm hit on tonight is, um, and this goes, this ties into taking action and think, act, and be. You and me, in everything that we do, we should be working, 
trying to be in the top 1% of whatever we do. Whatever we do. If you play the trumpet, if you play the trombone, if you play the drums, if you play a piano, right? If you're the shift manager at work, if you're the coke distributor, if you're the lawn landscaper, if you're the street sweeper, if you're the president, we all should be working to get into the top 1% of whatever our craft is. Whatever our craft is. That means you should be studying it, you should be working on it, you should be spending time with it to get in the top. Why, why is it important to get into the top 1%? Even being a good parent, even being a good spouse, even, I mean, even being a good friend, right? We should be working to get in the top 1%. Why? Because people in the top 1%, they reap all of the benefits. They reap all of the benefits. And you can see any example that you, you can go anywhere in your universe and think, think of somebody right now that you say, man, he or she's in the top 1%. He or she's in the top 1%. I guarantee you they're experiencing life on another level. They are experiencing life at least being the top 10%. Because anything less than that, that's just, that's just mediocrity. And God didn't create us to be mediocre. And how do I know that? I know that because if you think about the things that God created, the heavens and the earth, it ain't nothing mediocre. It, I mean, nothing mediocre about that. All of the fishes in the sea, all the animals, 10 fingers, 10 toes, brains, eyes, ears, it ain't nothing mediocre about that. That's, that, I mean, that's unfathomable. Like, who could come up with something that, you know what I'm saying? That magnificent. And then we take all of that stuff that's magnificent and we just make it average. Just regular. So whatever you're doing, whatever you're working on, work on being in that top 1%. Definitely work on being in the top 1%. Um, great information. I'm going to give you all a couple books, the book of the week. Uh, these are some of my all-time favorites. And if you take the time to, to purchase these books, they will be your all-time favorites as well. And a lot of people are trying to manage their personal finances. This is a book. It's an easy read. I've had it on the show probably 10 times. I've only had 90 shows. And I've had this book on at least 10 times. The Richest Man in Babylon. The Richest Man in Babylon probably cost you about $6. $6. This book is priceless. This book is priceless. And the number one rule is, what's the number one rule given by the richest man in Babylon? Listen to this. Listen how timeless this is. Part, listen to this. Part of all you make is yours to keep. Simple. Part of all you make is yours to keep. Part of everything that you make is yours to keep. Part of everything that you make is yours to keep. What does that mean? That means for every dollar that you make, I don't care who got to get paid. I don't care who is behind on this or that. Ten cent out of every dollar should go to you first. Not pay your bills first. Not, and it sound crazy because you might be like, man, I'm, shoot, I'm this, but that's why. You have some of these problems. You don't have a money problem. You have an understanding of money problem. Mm. A understanding of money and how it works. If you paid yourself first, 10 cent out of every dollar, right? $10 out of every hundred, $100 out of every thousand. Over time, you will accumulate enough money to do what? Take action to change your financial life. You, you, would have, you would have substance to do that. But if you don't have anything to take advantage of opportunities when they come, then there is no opportunity for you. And you will forever perpetually be behind in trying to play catch up. Because you don't have something like 
you could st somebody come to you, hey man, you can buy this car, give me three thousand, three thousand. The car's worth twenty five thousand, or the house is worth thirty thousand. This is these are true stories. I went to an auction today. I'm gonna share this with you. I know we got like two minutes left. This is a true story. I went to an auction today where they were auctioning off property all around the country, right? Single family houses, vacant land, this, that, that. It was a, it was an older gentleman in the audience. It was thirty people in the room. It was one guy in the audience. I said, I sat next to this one guy unknowingly. I sat next to this one guy. This one guy bought ten. Listen to what I'm saying to you. He bought ten different pieces of property and didn't spend one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. How do I know? I was there and I was writing it down. He bought this piece for twelve hundred. He bought that piece for ten thousand. He bought that piece for twenty thousand. I this is, bro. This this book right here. This is a Bible. I sat here and watched this guy buy a piece of property. Listen to this. That had a tax appraised value for three hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars. How do I know? Because I called the tax assessor's office and got the printout to find out how much the property was worth. He brought that property for $20,000. You know how hurt I was? I'm still hurt. You can't tell, I mean, I had to get myself together. But he went on a tear. I seen him, he, he brought another piece of property, 38 acres, right outside of Atlanta, 38 acres of retail space. For twenty eight, uh, twenty five thousand dollars, I seen some stuff today, but I learned from it. I, I sat there and learned. I stayed until the whole thing was over. I learned from that. I learned from it. So I'm saying all that to say, part of all you make is yours to keep. This book, if you get this book and read it and apply the simple steps that are in this book. It would change your life. Now, this book, this is one of my favorite books. I've had this on probably 20 times. And uh, I'm going to close with this because the guy that I was just telling you about that I unknowingly sat next to in the auction that really just hurt my little feelings today is like, man, I, I got to get some more money. I got to get some more money. This is the chapter that I want you all to concentrate on. There's a chapter in this book, it's lesson, it's lesson five. It's called Imagination. This, it's called Imagination. Some other book? Okay. Um, and the reason that chapter is so important is this. You can see something, me and you can see the same thing, right? And I can look at it and say, man, that ain't nothing but a bunch of dirt and a bunch of rundown houses and something, something else. It's going to take you forever to do such and such. And you can look at the same thing and say, you know what? Maybe we need to tear everything down and put in a, a mobile home park. Just something that simple. And if you look around, if you look around our world right now, the people that have imagination, Uber, Lyft, that's imagination. Mm -hmm. That's that's sit down and saying, you know, what if, what if, what if somebody would get in a car and they use their own tour room? That's imagination. So that's stuff that you're seeing in your neighborhood. You might be driving by something and you're seeing it every day. Like, man, the houses need to be. I, I got to, he turned me on to that a couple weeks ago. Powerful brother. And I'm telling him about how I was going to fix this house up, renovate this stuff. You know what he told me? He said, man, don't touch that house. Mm. He said, man, go get a bulldozer, bulldoze that house down, and sprinkle some... <laughs> yeah, I told you like that. Man, I can't, I can't make this up, man. I'm talking to this brother, man, I'm going to redo the kitchen. <laughs> I'm going to update the bathroom. <laughs> he let me finish. I done renovated the whole house. I'm going to do the sockets, the gutters, the dead. He said, man, don't do all that. He said, <laughs> he said, man, get a bulldozer. <laughs> get a 
bulldoze and bulldoze the whole house and then go out there and sprinkle some grass seed and put some straw. <laughs> I said, what? <coughs> he said, listen, man, this is why I said we got to, this is imagination. He said, listen, man, he said, what's more, he said, what's more valuable? A raggedy house in a neighborhood or a nice, clean, green lot. He said, which one is more valuable? He said, man, did you realize if you got a nice, clean, green lot, somebody will come along and pay you $40,000, $60,000 for a vacant lot? Even $10,000. Why you going to be fooling with a house, renovate it? Nah, man, tear that house down, let somebody come pay you for it, and you keep it moving. And I said, wow, that's imagination. I sure was about to fix that. Thing. I was about to turn that to. But guess what I'm about to do now? <laughs> if you know somebody with a good bulldog, <laughs> call it. Call me, man. Call me, man. But um, yeah, that's 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 it for the night, man. And um, I know I, I deviated because we had that little interruption when the young lady called in. But the other episode that I'm doing on the, the, the we're shooting the pilot of the show. The second episode we're going to do is going to be tied to Amendment 4, and we're going to have a serious conversation about that legislation that led to convicted felons being able to regain their right to vote. But that's not the end of the story. That's the beginning of the story. This brother's going to come on. I'm going to have him on the TV show, have him share his story on the TV show, and I'm going to have him on the Daily Bread radio show. But... It's going to be, pop. I want to create some stuff that's just going to resonate in the world. So I, when it goes out to the world, you know, the guy would say, hey, man, you got to, he said, again, talk about what we just talked about, think, act, and be. The dude who's producing the show, he said, man, you're going to have to be a star. Man, you're going to have to, act. you have to be like a superstar. I said, let me tell you something, man. I said, I know, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. I said, I am a superstar. I'm already a superstar because I believe that people that we call quote unquote superstars and celebrities, they were already like that. But guess what happened? Somebody discovered them and exposed the world to them. Are you telling me if Joe Jackson didn't get Michael Jackson and put him on the stage, that Michael Jackson wouldn't be Michael Jackson? You ready to play an exit music? Huh? You ready to play an exit music? Or you gonna be Joe Plum? You know, Man, you know what, man? If y'all know a good producer, I'm just telling you. And y'all are already superstars, too. So don't let nobody tell you that you're not a superstar. We just need exposure. So that's all I'm looking for. I'm already, I'm a superstar. So when you put me in front of a million people, as opposed to 10,000 or 1,000, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to be a bigger superstar. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to continue to do what? Educate, motivate, and elevate but just on a bigger platform. Think about how many people I can help. I can help millions of people if I was on a bigger platform, and that's where I'm headed. So with that, I want you all to have a beautiful evening, have a beautiful weekend. Make sure that you come and join us at New Jerusalem this Saturday. Go to dkmradio.com, go to the calendar page, get your tickets, come see Big Brother Laugh A Lot, come see Light Skin Bobby Well, come see Six Five, come to see yours truly, come to see Raheem, and the whole DKM family, New Jerusalem, this Saturday, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And if you need more information, go to dkmradio.com. And you can download the information or get your tickets. I'll see you all Saturday. Say and make bread. Do what? Say bye to Cornbread. Say bye to Cornbread. Good night, Cornbread. What up, what up, what up? Good night. <laughs> Good show. Hey, man, I appreciate you, boy. From the bottom of my heart, man. Love you, man. I'll be there March 21st, baby. I'll be there for you. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. Give yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a star! I'm a superstar! Not a superstar! I'm a superstar! Not a superstar! 91! We going to 90? 2!